Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Dynamite Shirt Printing, Kyle Metz. What a guy. He came on as a sponsor, and my primary use for him is drop shipping. So what that means is that I don't got to buy inventory. I don't got to buy a bunch of t-shirts. Uh, Kyle handles it all. So it's ordered online, and then he prints it and ships it, and he handles everything. And um, it works out for both parties. Uh, if you're looking for something else like general screen printing, he handles that. He does embroidery. He does direct-to-garment, DTG, which means you can do one-offs, and there's no minimum on that. Um, Kyle's been able to help a lot of businesses that I've been funneling to him just to get going and to, you know, start up. I mean, you know, you don't want to order a hundred t-shirts when you're, you're just coming out the gate and, um, Kyle can handle small orders, large orders. He can handle everything you need. That's dynamite shirt printing and it's dynamite shirt printing.com. Uh, go check it out. My favorite skate shop in the Valley, fiveanddimeeaston.com. You can shop online or in store. Their address is 140 Northampton Street, Easton, PA. Their hours are Monday through Friday, 11 to 7, Saturday, 10 to 7, and Sundays, 11 to 5. They carry clothing, shoes, boards, accessories, and more. You can get complete decks down there. They got grip. They got some local clothing down there as well. I know a couple guys that came on the show that they're now selling stuff in, in store, and they're exclusive to Fucked. They are doing so much for the independent uh, skate community. They're doing so much for uh, the DIY. They're doing a lot in the area with skateboarding, and I couldn't be prouder to have them as a sponsor. Um, their story is incredible from starting it when they were 18 and then coming back later in life to opening up what the store is that they wanted. And uh, the two guys down there are just incredible. Uh, I can't say enough good things about them. I love that they're a sponsor, and they really help out in the community. And if you skate or want to support them, please go check them out locally. It is 140 Northampton Street, Easton, PA. Online, it is 5 Please go check them out. All Valley. All Valley Rooter. Jared LaBarba. Friend of the show. Childhood friend. Never again. Studios official plumber. 24-hour emergency services. 610-762-1656. That's 610-762-1656. 1656. They charge by the job, not by the hour, and they are 100% fully insured. They have free estimates. They also do installation and repair. They have a, a list, a list of things. I can't go over them all on here, but you can find them at allvalleyrooter.net. All of Jared's services are on there. It's a beautiful website. You can contact him through that website. You can find out how to do you know, emergency services. Where should I call? Who should I contact? You can get all that there at allvalleyrooter.net. Free estimates, fully insured. Jared LaBarba. Check him out. I'm Mark. They call me Rip. Rips Auto Detail. You can find me on Instagram, Rips Auto Detail, R I P S Auto Detail. Uh, you can hit me, Mark, at ripsautodetail.com for my email. Uh, so if you want to call me, 484 553 1366. Uh, social media is really, you'll see most of what I'm doing. But for the business, yeah, give me a follow on Rips Auto Detail. Watch what I'm doing. Uh, if you're interested in paint corrections, ceramic coatings, anything in the Lehigh Valley as far as uh, high line aesthetics for your vehicle. We're not talking cheap stuff here, and I'm not trying to sugarcoat it. It just is what it is. I've been working at this for a long time, and if you want someone to take uh, a pride, prideful approach to the aesthetic care of your vehicle and, and really turn you out a product that you haven't experienced with someone else before, give me a shot, man. Uh, it's a one-car, one-man approach, and... Everybody gets the same level of devotion. Um, you know, obviously some jobs cost more and some less, and you've got to draw a fine line there. It's easy to really obsess over things and go too far sometimes and over-deliver. It's never really a bad thing, though. So give me a shot. Never again radio episode. I have no clue at this point. <laughs> Welcome to Never Again Radio. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Um, I've known your sister for a very long time, and we cross paths um, at a couple of different times in life. And uh, your story has always interested me. Uh, I just got back from Las Vegas, so there's so <laughs> much, so much uh, I want to pick through on how you ended up in Las Vegas. You have so many different creative things going on between be, between dance and fashion and apparel, and um, I really want to dive into a lot of this, but. 
what made you move to Las Vegas and where did you kind of start being so motivated to do something so out of the box? Um, well, originally my career, obviously my whole dancing love started here, well, in Bethlehem on Main Street, the Ballet Guild of the Lehigh Valley. Mm. Um, <laughs> I got very serious with dance and decided to make that what I wanted to do professionally. So I went to college for it. And right after college, um, I had a girlfriend who lived in Vegas and she was very successful in Vegas. So is her boyfriend. And they said, why don't you come out? You can live with me for a little bit. I'll hook you up with auditions and we'll make it work. That's crazy. So I'm like, woo, okay. I had $200, a <laughs> duffel bag, and I just went, you know? I was like, why the frick not? I mean, it was definitely not something that I even envisioned ever. Were your parents into the idea? Um, Surprisingly, yes. <laughs> wow. I know. Yeah. you would, like, But I think because they wanted me, They not that they were hesitant with me going into dance, but like, Obviously, a, a career in dance, it's its not something that's like, you know, oh, that's a moneymaker. She's going to be set. She's going to be good. So there's highs and lows to a dance career and being a professional dancer. So, but they've always supported me and that they wanted something big, at least for me in that aspect. So I think them knowing that I was going to a huge entertainment yeah. city, they were like, okay, and you know somebody out there. You'll be good, you know, fine. Yeah, because I mean, in the Valley, your story just kind of only is going one direction. You're either going to open up your own dance school, you're going to, you know, uh, you know, like maybe teach kids that are going to yeah. go on to do something, and then you kind of live your career through one moment of like being successful in a career of teaching someone. So, I yeah. mean, you would almost have to leave the Lehigh Valley yeah, to pursue like a dream in dancing. It Especially when it comes to if you want to do it professionally, like on a stage and entertainment wise before you go into that teaching aspect. So you have to go somewhere. And I wasn't a fan of New York. I've never really been a fan of New York. Um, so this was a perfect, it just fell into my lap. And it was just one of those things where I was like, this feels good. This yeah. feels like it's something that I need to do. And it's important to pay attention to that feeling because when you get into a lane and then you figure out later in life with like, I'm very similar probably to what you're going through now is like where you find lanes and then you know it feels correct mm -hmm. and then those are the decisions to like, move forward. Yeah. yeah, You're like, all right, I got a couple months, let's go. Yeah, go as far exactly. as I can until I hit a wall. <laughs> exactly. I don't even think there was any type of hesitation and that's how good it felt to make that decision. So I went out there, um, you know, I, it's, it, it, the city is definitely a city where like you need to know people. If you don't know anybody, it's very tough. It's it just, you have to have at least one person in the scene to get that ball rolling. Yeah. And that was the girl that I was living with. Long story short, I mean, this is gonna be a little bit crazy for people, but uh, her boyfriend ended up killing her. Uh, it's a lifetime story, death of a Vegas showgirl, if you want to see more about that story. But they had a very abusive, toxic relationship. And that ended up happening. Obviously, he were you living with them at that time? I had just moved out and got my own plate because living with her and being her being in that relationship, it was just like it was insane. Living yeah, with her. it's probably like almost like being stuck in the middle of a divorce. Oof, it was bad. And then it was like that. Then I was friends with both of them, so like yeah. I was like this middle person and just wasn't healthy. Um, so I had moved out. I, two weeks before it happened, it was around Christmas. I think this was 20, 2011. I think that that's when it was, or 2010, 2011, one of those years. And I remember actually being at a bar with my sister here because I was here for Christmas and it was on Nancy Grace about how she was missing and everything. And eventually it came to a head and because the, his roommate that you know helped him with everything went to the cops and that's that. So after everything happened, um, I was on my own. How was that to pivot off of? Um, it was like, 
I mean, <laughs> it was one of those things where, I mean, you go through life and you have these like, whoosh, and you have those lemons and like you're like dodging them and making lemonade and like those speed bumps that you have to get over. And then there's those like waves that just like knock you over yeah, and like reset you and you have to figure it out. And But I was so determined to make it work even though I didn't have the hookups and I didn't have any type of help with that, I had to stay there until I felt accomplished and I wasn't gonna leave until I did that. Because Yeah, that's gonna be hard. I mean, you obviously lose a friend and then you um, you have to, you know, I, I've lost so many people in my life where you start realizing down the road that you have to make adult decisions on like, you can't, you can't let that anchor you. So yeah. then, you know, I like that you stayed there because a lot of people either would have just moved home and hey, that's crazy. This could happen to me. Yeah. I'm out of Las Vegas. <laughs> but um, it shows a lot um, uh, of the character of who you are as a person, which is like my favorite thing to showcase here. So to get into it this early to highlight that, like, I know, you know I went right in. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I like that. Um, you know, sometimes it takes too long to get into it, but you're comfortable already. We have drinks. Uh, this is fun. So um, to see you wanting to stay there and kind of fight and like, you know, take what you were going out there for. And I think a lot of times in life, people will take moments of those waves and use it as an excuse because then they, they don't fail. Mm -hmm. because oh well this happened to me so that's the end of the story here I moved back to the valley I teach here part time whatever so like I love a good story where the you know you get knocked down you're picking your life back up you, some crazy shit happened and now yeah. we're gonna move forward so what was that like for you it's, to move forward I mean yeah, it had to be it's, scary it's fuel to the fire though because I am never one to give up easy um, and I've always been a fighter in that aspect and I've never been one to just be like satisfied with with something mediocre or simple. I, not nothing about my life has ever been simple, and I I have no regrets with that. It's been a wild ride, but like <laughs> you know. So after that happened, um, and I didn't have a car at the time either, and so I just. I just networked myself. I would just go out. I would walk to auditions. I would just like, I would just, I just got up in the morning. I so when you go to auditions, is it like going to casinos to be a part of shows? So there's like a, see the thing with Vegas, it's, it's beautiful. So you have so many shows, then you have uh, agencies, production agencies that like hot will hire dancers and performers. And like then when jobs come in, like if conventions come in or something comes in where they need dancers, when they have like uh, Grammys or the like whatever and they need dancers, stuff like that for like any type of production, any type of entertainment. People are looking for dancers when they come to that city. So that's an option. And then you have venues, you have nightclubs. And in the nightclubs, you know, people don't, still don't get it. Um, it's not like going out and like go-go dancing in the nightclubs. You go out there and you put on these amazing costumes. You you do choreography. You fly from the sky. You ha have to actually be a legitimate performer and dancer and put on shows for these nightclubs. Yeah. And I at, at first, I even was skeptical about working for a nightclub. I was like, oh, I'm better than that. I have a dance degree. Like, yeah. I'm not going to be in the nightclub scene. But when I actually would go out, and that's when I would be networking, I would just go out, meet people. And I don't even know how I did that because I'm such an introvert now. I, like, transformed into an introvert. I don't know what happened. But I was just – I think I was just so determined to – to make it work that that was getting me out there so when i would see these performers and these dancers on stage and what they would do i'm like i want to do that that's freaking cool it paid decent i was like i'm gonna do that so i finally after audition audition because even at the auditions you have to kind of know people and they hire the same girls for the same like they know who they're gonna hire yeah so that was really difficult. So, and it doesn't even matter if you dance better than it, whatever. It's they hired who they who they knew and who they you know wanted to hire. So once I landed that first job, it was at Hayes in the Aria. Um, 
I that then then it you know went off from there because what was that like getting that first job did you call back home immediately yeah yeah yeah. I was like (laughs) I was like listen (laughs) finally it's happening and um you know and going in and you get like dress you go into the dressing room they do your hair and your makeup they put you in these elaborate costumes really uncomfortable shoes but and you go out there and you just like put on a show and it, the energy is insane yeah and the DJs at the time I mean that's when the music was good I mean we opened when David Guetta was like just getting started and he had the fuck me I'm famous whole thing we were the dancers for that and it was a huge hit I mean I've I've danced for such incredible musicians artists and DJs I mean the list goes on but the energy of being on stage with them and and then the energy of the people is like liberating and so I just kept on that kind of thing because I really like it was it was like made, that job was like made for me so um would it become addicting because I, I figure like the this is what you get to do. You've worked this hard to get there. You land that. And then, you know, you, you don't really start putting it into perspective when you start naming these bigger DJs. And then you're on like a level level. And especially mm-hmm. with just getting back from there, which is why I'm glad we're doing this now. Whereas I had a little insight into like these shows and the production. So it's like, as a performer, what's that like when you get off the stage? Because I'm sure there's a ritual when you're getting your hair. I mean, just seeing your face when you were talking about that, mm-hmm. like you're lighting up. And like, so I mean, for you to be going through hair and makeup then you go out there and then you get to release this and it's on a level of where it's not like you you would do it where somebody didn't understand it like you're in las vegas it's it's if you don't understand it you're the one that's behind Mm -hmm. so like for you to walk off stage was there a dump out of that and like was you know and then was there an addiction to like i gotta do that tomorrow like just seeing it in your face is kind of like it seems like you're you're now chasing this creative this creative dream that you yeah, made for yourself. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was definitely high to yeah. be honest with you and screw therapy. I didn't need it. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know? lots I meant that like the was, dump out on yeah, that after. Yeah, like you would go out like sometimes I wouldn't even it, not that I would black out, but like you would just get in this zone and just perform and these people and you're performing for these people that like you would connect with them and then connect with the music and then with yourself and it was just it was awesome and i was able to do so many things like one like i was at so many different venues because i was with a produ- uh, company that had so many like venues so now you're lounge. in now you're in yeah. with the in girls and now mm-hmm. you, they're putting you you know, are they like, how does that work? Do they like call you like almost like a contractor and they're like, hey, can you fill these dates? And then like you kind of start booking yourself out for the year? Yeah. So I was with a company called Light Group um, and they owned, I think, like three nightclubs and a couple lounges. So we would alternate the venues like on Fridays I would be at Hayes on Saturdays I would be at light and it's so fun like yeah so it's not even like I was at one place yeah I was able to go to all these different places you would throw on like whatever your character was for the day did you get to create that or did they kind of have a you know like when when their costumes and all that are you a part of building that costume or Mm -hmm. No. Or is it just something that they're like, hey, this is the theme we're going with? Yeah, you were definitely like just like there to be like, okay, dance, <laughs> what, whatever you want to put on me, put on me, and that's kind of which we'll tap into later. That's kind of why I went to costume designing and whatnot. But um, yeah, so you were just a muse. So like you, if you had a heavy ass ponytail piece that like dragged like your like head down and crazy earrings and like seven inch platform heels that you had to go on you like, gotta figure it out yeah <laughs> that's cool one i'm sure time, i built so much character yeah and one time we were in like this giant latex like bodysuit from head to toe where you had to oil yourself to get into this latex that's nuts <laughs> it took like at least a good like 20 minutes to get your body in it And then they gave us these wigs that like came down here so you couldn't see. So you'd have to make like little windshield wipers through the (laughs) bed. And they would just be like, but on stage it looked cool. Yeah. Was I comfortable? No. Absolutely not. No, no. It's just hot. And then you just smelled like a giant condom for like a month. Like, (laughs) 
<laughs> it's like there could have been an easier way to get this look and not be this uncomfortable. Yep. <laughs> so now I see where uh, the brain starts going with the costume yes, design. Yes, because I'm like, and and being on stage, you see the lights, you see what works, you see what doesn't, you know what's comfortable and what can last and what you can like stretch and move in. So that's that's kind of where I like trickled into. I'm gonna make my own costumes and you know create that so you know and then the the reason why after so long the dance career did end in Vegas is I got to a point where I think it just I wasn't enjoying it as much the music got shitty yeah um the vibe got it just wasn't the the same feeling the people i was working for like they changed management directors some of them were a little creep show you know i i landed a sweet gig with a huge production company based in la called zen arts i don't even care if i'm name dropping right now but um it was a dream job. You were traveling the world and performing. That's crazy. So it was a traveling production company. Um, and once I landed that, I was like, I'm set. Like, even if I like just stay home base in Vegas and I travel and do this stuff, like this, this is it. This is like what I want to do. And then obviously the director of Zen Arts um, was an ass and a perv and you know one night he made a pass at me and I turned him down and because I turned him down he fired me so it was fine because if that's the type of company that he runs then I want no part of it yeah and I'm sure that happens a lot yeah more than people talk about or I mean it seems to be coming out more every year on like what's kind of behind the curtains of people mm -hmm. like that but um and that's and that's what started happening like there was almost this expectation of of us dancers to to do certain things um just to kind of go up the ladder and then i found myself kind of staying staying on one staying at one place because I wouldn't do all these different things. And so, but I, so that was kind of the breaking point for me where I was like, okay, I did, I did so much. I even wore, I worked, I got a gig with Cirque du Soleil when they were at light. I did all acrobatic stuff in the air. I poured champagne upside down in a harness to people. How like, was the acrobatics? Was there like, it seems like this field and everything is such a passion, but was any of it difficult to transition into? I mean, acrobatics is... I mean, did you have gymnastics as a kid? Like, what kind of led to even trusting yourself to get into that? Um, it was kind of like everybody around me was doing it. So it was accessible for me to do yeah. it. So I started with the silks, which is like the rib, like kind of like the fabric that hangs. And I started doing private coaching with that. Um, I had the flexibility to do all that from my ballet and dance training, but the strength training I had to do because you're up there, you have to hold your own like body weight. And yeah, I would get in these beautiful poses, but then I'd like, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then I started with personal trainers and, and then doing that and a lot of work you put behind this. Yeah, but it was it was a different avenue and it was a step up from what I was doing. Um, so it was fun and it was, it was a goal and you know, I, I went there. I didn't do it for that long because it's very, uh, taxing on the body. Um, it's just, you, there's a lot that goes into doing all that. And there's a lot of risk too, because when you're out there doing stuff in the air, there's not, you're going out there at your own risk. So if you're not in a harness or you don't have anything underneath you, you're just going out there and praying for the best. So um, I'm glad that I did tap into that. And because being up in the air over people and performing and doing things, it's like a whole other level of things. Being on stage is one thing, but being up in the air is a whole other element. So I'm happy to say and proud that I did do that and got to experience that. But then at the end of the day, towards the end, you know, I'm like, I, eight and a half years later, 
you know, I didn't even realize how long I was out there. Yeah, it, that was my next kind of thing that I wanted to point out is you were there for a while. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't even... I like that, though. I think a lot of people might have got washed out from it and came back or like... Oh, yeah, that happens all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even when I went out there to visit, I went from Tuesday to Saturday and people were like, you're crazy. And I'm like, I would live here. Yeah. I mean, I lived a little bit off the strip. Um, I mean, in the beginning, obviously, I partied had a of good course, time why wouldn't you? when friends would come into town i would have a good time but you find that balance and it really was just like work 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 and hustle and build my resume and my career like pointing that out like that's got that had to have been fun to find that pocket because you know everybody's going to go out there and get you know messed up and you stay up late and you there's so many like i remember when we were out there it was like it's almost addicting to know that you can just go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. It's still open. It's still open. It's yeah. still open. And you can, like I said to my buddy, I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, I'm getting all jazzed up. I'm like, let's go to another bar. So, I mean, to live out there, I mean, I know what it's like to just go out every Saturday around here in my 20s. It's like, so to be out there that long, but then to find that pocket and almost get behind the curtain at Oz is like, ah, oh, all right. Well, like now I see the hustle. Now I see the grind. Like I can make money out here and like, this is what I love to do. And I mean, it's got to be, it's got to be fulfilling to you to know that you stayed out that out there that long to do that. Cause I'm sure it is not an easy city to break into. No, no. And getting back to like always having something to do. Like I would get off, if I had people in town, I would get off my shift, which was if I was at one of the nightclub venues, it would be like 2, 3 a.m. And they would be like, oh, we're at Dre's After Hours or like we're here. So like I would go have a couple like drinks, take a cab home and then, you know, do it all over again the next day. But I, you know, there is that you finding that balance was beautiful. And, I, and then. And I think that it was so, at a time, it was definitely just like, it was refreshing because I was doing my thing. I mean, I even had like other jobs on the side. There's cocktail waitressing that goes on. And like, so you can still make ends meet and be at an okay place and still be a performer and do what you love. And that's what I loved Vegas for was was that opportunity to do that for myself. Yeah, the options and opportunities are there if you make them happen. Yeah, yeah. So then it kind of like fizzled out. It got to a point where, you know, the the environment and where I was and the people I was around, it was toxic. Um, and I had to actually take a step back and like look in to figure that out. Um, and then I just wasn't enjoying it anymore. Like I used to love going into work and then like, there was a moment where it just changed. And when I would be driving into work, I'm like, ugh, like I was like dreading going in. Terrible feeling. Yeah, so I think that, I think that that's when I knew the run was over. Um, but I was, I was satisfied with the run that I had. So it was time to transition. I, you know, my my brother became a dad, so you know, family stuff out here. It was actually pretty perfect timing, and so I made the adjustment and um, came back east. It's tough when I remember um, I was even in Virginia, which isn't that far. Um, as a you know, you don't have to get on a plane to go there. So, um, you know, I remember my brother had kids and I was just like ah like do I want to be the <laughs> uncle that they don't know and then, like then that like really starts changing perspective on like what you want your family life to be and um just from you know knowing you guys and how you are it seems like your family is very tight we're very tight knit and you know I would I would still even when I was out there I would come for like uh, Christmas and holidays as much as I could I would make sure I would well the good thing about Vegas is during the holidays it's like pfft. so you were able to take some time off yeah, yeah, yeah and and so I would do like a good chunk of time to like spend with them for the holidays I've actually never been without my family for one Chris for any Christmas it's awesome I've always been able to be around them uh, for Christmas um, but yeah even like I mean, my sister came out for the last two years of my Vegas venture, and she was just getting started, unfortunately. I mean, but it was good to have her there, but I was ready to go, and she was like, oh, 
Like, yeah. there's so much to do out here. I was yeah. like, well, you should have came sooner because I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's like, uh, I, I uh, you know, I know your sister and she's super creative and mm-hmm. you run into other people around here where um, you're almost depressed because you don't have enough art and culture and things going on. So you're constantly like chasing something and you don't know what it is because you're just trying to fulfill something. And I've always wanted to go out. And in my 20s, I never went because I felt I was too wild. And then I was sober for 10 years and I thought that that time would be pointless to go because I don't (laughs) feel like I would experience Vegas the way I want to experience Vegas. And then now that I'm kind of like doing my own thing and having a, you know, whatever I do now, I don't even know what you call it, but I went back to regular life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so when I went out there and I was so filled like that's what people weren't getting. Like they're like, I can't believe you're two days is enough for me. And I'm like, I could have done a month out here. Yeah, but that's I, doing normal, typical yeah. Vegas bullshit. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but like, there's so much more to the city. That's what like I kept asking like Uber drivers and stuff, and I'm like, well, what's outside of the city? I'm like, what's out in that desert? I'm like, what else is around here? And then I was like, because I got like the <laughs> like I I I was fortunate to go with someone who knew Vegas, and I feel like I got a really good experience Ooh, good. in Vegas for the first time. Mm-hmm. We went food we took in shows um you know the first night there we did absinthe and like that was like huge that was like a kick in the dick it was like we're in vegas and i was like let's go (laughs) then we went out afterwards um you know we went to dinners and all that but when i go back i want to start scratching at the surface and i want to start finding out what else is there and Mm -hmm. i want to see what's outside of the city and different areas and like the debt like i kept going what's behind those mountains because you can see the mountains and you know my buddy's trying to explain it but i i want to go back and i I have a curiosity of it oh yeah and even like five days is that how long you were out five tuesday to saturday yeah so even that little bit of time it's not enough. No. I mean, I was out there almost a decade and there is still more to venture, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's one of those cities where people just think of it as like, like one thing. They go out there, they probably hire a VIP host who gives them an itinerary that's the same freaking itinerary for everybody. So they only know that, which is pool parties and dinners at expensive restaurants that the food's mediocre and then you go to a nightclub and pay out the ass and like and then you do it all over again the next day but you go to a different pool party no i mean like that's fun to like try out but like we went to one pool area above the Cromwell because um, oh. when we checked in, they were like Drace. They were like, "Go check!" Like Wiz Khalifa was there the next oh, day. Oh gosh! We took we, we went up there. We were still drunk from the night before, and my buddy. It was the first day that he was in Vegas without having to work. So we we're at the hotel. He's like, "Let's go check it out." So we go up there, and it's crazy. It's out of a movie, and I'm oh, just yeah. like, "Yo, this is nuts!" So we have one drink, and there's nowhere to really sit down. You're allowed nope. to sit in the pool, but we didn't have trunks on or anything. And then the he's, infested he, pool. <laughs> He's like, he goes, I'm I'm just going to talk to the guy. He's like, that guy's in charge. I can tell he's in charge. And he's like, I'm just going to talk to him. Let's just start asking questions. And I'm always down for like <laughs> learning when you're out there. So he's like, hey, man, how much is it to sit at these tables? And it was three chairs and a table. Oh, yeah. It was just three chairs and a table, 600 bucks. Mm-hmm. And then and then he was like, all right, all right. And then he's like, for the cabanas? Because there was a group of guys who just oh, got God. to the cabanas. And he goes, those are two grand to start. <laughs> to and start. I, to start, man. Yeah. <laughs> But I was like, that's cool though. Like I get that hustle. And then like I was, but also if you don't have those prices, you can't control, like if that was just open to everybody, that's not, they're not selling that vibe. <laughs> like, no. They were definitely selling an experience. And if you had the money to experience it, but I like that though. Like there's different areas that were set up like that. But yeah, yeah we hung out there for a little bit. Yeah. Luckily, Two drinks. Luckily, yeah. W- which were probably 20 bucks each. <laughs> yep, yep. Yep. That was another thing everybody kept texting me. They're like, how are you affording this? This is so expensive. And I was like, bro, I didn't go out here thinking this shit was going to be cheap. Mm-hmm. I did not think this was going to be going to the, the sands and uh, I can have a couple <laughs> free drinks because I'm playing penny slots. Like I went out there knowing I was going to spend money. But I also didn't want to experience Vegas by being like, I don't have enough money, so no. we can't go out tonight. Like and I was, I was cut- all in on everything. Yeah. Everything. Everything. And like I'm, I don't know if I'll ever experience it that way again. But like that's what I wanted to do the first time. I just wanted to go in, not think about money. I was left alone for two days. I just went out in the city. I Ubered. <laughs> I went around. I checked out different casinos. What was cool is like people were hitting me up on social media. They're like, "Go here, go there," and I did. And I was like, would hit them up, be like, "Thanks, this was a good time." 
I love it. I cannot wait to go back. Like, I know why now your sister was like, rah. Yeah, yeah. But I came, I came back full. She was like that free bird that like finally was able to be a free bird. Yeah. And she was like, come on, Lynn. Like, let's go do these things. I was like, been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, we. I still wanted her to experience what I experienced, just even if it was a minuscule of it. Yeah. And the thing with me is she got to experience, like, the VIP way of doing it because because of me being in the industry. For that long. I could go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and be like, follow me. And we would yeah, go yeah, through yeah, the yeah. back. Yeah. We would go through the back. They would have a free table for us with a few bottles as long as you brought like your dancer girls, your your group of friends, which I loved the girls that I danced with. They were from they were from all over the world. That's a, another thing about yeah. Vegas. You probably met so many awesome so people. So many people like Australia, Cuba, Colombia, like like there was rarely any American people out there. I mean, obviously there was few, but the ones that I connected with weren't from America, <laughs> which whatevs. But we all had such a great time and we would all go out. It's got to be cool going there and having that many. It's got to be surreal to be talking to other women from other countries and they all have the same dream you have with going out there to dance. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that must have been what a, what a really cool part of your life to have lived. Yeah, and and I mean they would dance and then send money to their families, like because, you know, that's what they did. They were like, they were the person that went and was able to build something for themselves, and they would obviously make money for themselves, and they would send the rest of the money to their families, and that was the place where you could do that. And like these girls worked their asses off, and they were beautiful women inside and out, and they still just like they rock it still. So I give them so much credit and I was so, I'm so happy to have been able to meet them and experience, you know, what I, because it's one thing to experience it and have the job and do it, but if you're around a good group of performers and artists, that makes it even better. Yeah. So I was very lucky to have that. Um, and once you had that group, they would hire that group because like we just meshed well together. We would we would like vibe off of each other. So they would hire us all for different venues and things that they would like need us for and it was fun. So you had like your little your little group and if we ever wanted to go out and have a good time, we were set up. And so Kristen got to experience that. My sister got to experience that. I was like, no, we don't go through the front door. We go through the back door. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> the side door. <laughs> so when you guys decided to come back, what was that like for you to have been out there for that long and then now you're kind of like taking um, your life in a different direction? I mean, there's probably so much that you're still learning that you're, you've took from that eight years that like you're now applying to life and like to build a business and like the costume design and now you want to kind of build something similar to like a part of you were. But what was that like for you to pack up and say goodbye to Vegas? Um, you were know, you ready to go or was it? I was ready to go, um, but I, and I had started the costume line right before I left. And I got into the costuming because I was tired of performing and things that were uncomfortable and just didn't work. So that's why I got into that whole thing. And I knew what worked under the lights and what moved well and what fabrics to use. And so I started it out there. I used all of my dancer friends as uh, models for my first line of things. We did a whole photo shoot so I can have that's that fun. in the bag. Um, and then right after that is when I left. So I had already started that venture. Um, I was definitely ready to go and start something new in my life. Um, but I was a little nervous because I had lived such, like the lifestyle that I was living was insane. And I knew that there would be nothing even close to that moving back. But I kind of wanted a little bit of simplicity in my life because my life was so outrageous that I was like, okay, I'm at a point where it would be nice to meet somebody, settle down a little bit, have like a job that, you know, was consistent, had a consistent income where it wasn't such a roller coaster ride. 
Um, I was actually looking forward to that part, which is weird, but like, because I wouldn't think of myself as a nine to fiver sitting behind a desk. Like, that will never happen. I could never do that. <laughs> no. Um, but just having some stability because it was so chaotic and all over the place before. Like, so having that stability, also being around family was something I was looking forward to. But I mean, it was tough. When I got back, I like didn't have really any direction. Um, and obviously after I stopped dancing, like m my body just like blew up because I've been, I was dancing, you know, almost every day since I was a young kid. So once I stopped, you know, it was like, hey, body, you know, and then I was in my 30s, so that didn't help. So I'm like, oh, my God, now I'm this, like, big lord and I can't do anything <laughs> with my life, you know? So, like, it, the depression set in. I mean, it was it was bad. I was in a really dark place for a little bit of time, but I... I could also see um, the overstimulation out there mm -hmm. and the lights, and there's always constantly something to do and you're around things, and there is always something to do. And yeah. then coming back to the valley, even the small time I was out there, I just, like, I'm very self-aware of, like, what's going on with Michael and like within day three I was like oh man like that was a real like I, my mom was like how is it out there and I told her and I try and explain this to everybody as I said I've never been so distracted that I could pay attention and like that's what it felt like out there especially for someone who's constantly your brain's constantly going mm -hmm. creative people I feel like that's why your people are drawn to and falling in love it's either for some people or it's not no, it's for the yeah. creative people who are their brains are going you go out there and it's just bam, bam, bam you know you're in a pinball machine mm -hmm. so it's like to be used to that and then to come home to the valley which is there's not a lot of stimulation and it's just like hey you know there's an iron pigs game and you know and then there's just there's, there's music fest there's music <laughs> fest and, that doesn't really have good music yep and then they're like hey, here's the greek festival and then they're like bacon fest i mean the pierogi fest yes don't get me wrong. I Woo! I enjoy the things that are around here. But when you get a chance to see even a sliver of your travel of what's going on outside of this area, this reminds me of this entire area as a farmer's market. And then, like, if you go somewhere else, you're, like, in a play. Like, Vegas was weird because I, New York City didn't do that to me at all. Mm -mm. Philly doesn't I'm do that to me. To be filled like that out there... It's something I'll never forget, and I'm already like, ew, oh, let's yeah. go. Oh, God, where do you go? <laughs> like, uh, I loved every moment of it and, you know, travel, and now I'm like, is there other places that'll fulfill that? So, I mean, from the little I experienced, let alone in eight, eight years of that, you would almost be crazy if you didn't become depressed after that. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, screw this. What am I going to do? Like sulk in a corner for the rest of my life? Like I obviously made the transition for a reason because there are other opportunities for me and to take everything that I experienced and learned and like absorbed from being out there. And, and it's hard to take that step back and to yeah. realize that you did learn a lot of stuff. Yeah. Sometimes like, it's life's so crazy you don't realize what you learned. Yeah. I was like, what? Like, I have so much information that, like, I need to use that to my advantage in a place where there's not even anything close yeah. to, yeah. to <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like moving to Asbury Park by the, by the beach, like the Asbury Park is great because it is a little artsy fartsy and I love it. And um, but you guys grew up in Jersey. Um, we're my family's from New Jersey. We were born in North North New Jersey, so like Maplewood area. So Jersey is where you were pulled back to because yes. your family's primarily in, in the Valley, right? In Bethlehem, yeah. 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 Um, but uh, I wanted to find work near Asbury because Asbury was kind of the perfect step from um, Vegas. It was a smaller city, but the vibe was great there. Um, and the goal was kind of introduce a burlesque lounge there for I love that. Uh, like artistic entertainment, all about the, you know, woman empowerment and just the beauty of that art form and do it in a classy way, but have it like that old school vibe a little bit. Um, so that was kind of the goal. Um, and then and my sister and I were just spitting out ideas and we had a whole proposal ready to go it was just really finding a venue and investors and the whole nine and then pandemic happened you know 
that thing that happened in it's a blur anymore <laughs> yeah. right it's so crazy so um, just like two years lost yeah so then i started thinking well how can i still do something like this and provide entertainment and product uh, on that level of production um without finding a venue So that basically now things are flowing in kind of having a production team to do all this type of entertainment and going out to different venues that are open to having like nights of like a different theme night or something like that where we put on a production even for like people that have extravagant birthday parties or theme party whatever something like that where you have a few artists that do cool different like variety acts and whatever they're looking for at the time, you know, that's kind of the step stepping stone right now with that. And then the costumes is is still still kicking and then I can create more costumes for something like that. And then, you know, hopefully the burlesque shows will come. Did you guys that. book any um venues or anything yet or has it still been kind of difficult to do cuz I I've, when you started telling me about and I'm definitely interested on like really putting our heads together and like pulling off something I, I did the comedy show down here and that kind of was like my first itch into doing something and I'm, you know I said to my buddy I'm like hey we should do like do another one and he's like well what would you want to do and I'm like I don't know I'm like let's just do like a magician and like shit that's not you going on acts. anywhere need- yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and then like when I started wrapping my head around that he's like how would we do it and I'm like well we could drop the curtain over there we can do the magician but in between the magician there's a guy named Neil and he plays disc he plays disco on a keyboard at a bar over here called Miguel's on Friday nights okay. and we'll get high and we'll go over there and just sit at the bar and he's playing like just yacht rock and disco and he does <laughs> it with a keyboard and we're gonna try and use him a lot up at the the coffee shop when we do events over there because like it's if you sit there and pay attention to what's going on like why aren't more people doing stuff like this and then I was like hey we could take Neil and we could do stuff so like when you started talking about the burlesque stuff like it's such a cool idea. There's so many ways you can go with it. You can just rent out a piece of property and put up a tent. And like yeah. after seeing Absinthe, I was like, this isn't a tent. A tent. Yeah. A they tent. Did it it's old all school. lighting it's and like the stage rises and they have different people coming in. And I'm like, yo, this is totally crazy. They have all this going on in Vegas and it's still done in a tent. Yeah. It's the entertainment that I, and, and now that you, you say, and I'm, I'm a little bit more wiser Um, than I was when I first moved back. Like, we need to bring that entertainment value to a place that doesn't know it because we need to open up people's minds and eyes it's to, crazy like why, this why beautiful are, thing it's so it's beautiful like why aren't they doing stuff like that at the sands yeah you know what I mean like why aren't we getting like I went out there even when I went to uh, an Indian casino up north to see bare knuckle boxing I'm like how did we screw up our casino yeah. Like, how like did they you don't do even that? have like a venue in every single casino in Vegas. They have a venue yeah. where a show happens. That's why we were out a there. My, with my a show buddy happens. goes out for, you know, there's an expo center in, in the casino. So he goes out and they set him up in that because he's setting up the production for whatever is going on that weekend. But I was just, I'm like, they have a sports book here. I'm like, and then because mm-hmm. like he started, we started talking in the casino and he goes, oh, these are in every casino. And I'm like, why don't we have any of this? Yeah. It's just like, the, the, chalk it up to another thing. And you know how how they claim to rise a little bit in the arts for like the kids and whatever. We need to actually have some art stuff going on and some entertainment going on. When I heard about the Boyd, uh, you know, the demolition, like uh, Kristen and I always were like, when we come back, we're gonna buy the Boyd, like, cause we have money coming out of our asses. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna buy the bo- the Boyd, and we're gonna we're gonna use the old theater vibe and totally just bring that back and make it a burlesque lounge. And obviously, that didn't happen because there was mold everywhere and whatever. But we wanna we like her too, cause you know how her creativity is bringing that entertainment value whether it's just starting out at performing at different venues and then if it hits like people are like this this show or whatever this little like pop-up that you did is something that we would go see every friday night or something that people want to see like every friday night and then go that that route but i think starting with it 
doing pop-ups at different venues yeah. I mean, is going to I be. went to um, Emmaus Theater on Friday, mm -hmm. and I've talked to the guy from Emmaus Theater, and they've been switching up a lot of the things that they do since the pandemic, and they do their old movies there, and the theater's gorgeous. It's mm -hmm. really cool, um, and there's plenty of space there, and um, I saw a comedy show there, and there's a stage, but it's got like the whole theater vibe and everything, and they have the marquee outside, and it's in a really cool part of Emmaus, and like, there's no way that I couldn't get that all put together that we'd be able to do something at Emmaus. And then when we started talking about that, I'm like, oh, there's that theater in Wing Gap. And like, there are old theaters that are dying to do things and to get new blood in there. And it's like, I saw like, the comedy show probably filled out half the thing, but I mean, if they're okay with filling out half of it, there's no way we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to take a shot at putting something together at the Emmaus Theater and yeah. just making it happen. And I don't know how <clears throat> it hasn't, happened yet like that's why i like need to jump on this because it's it's something new and exciting and i think once people start getting open to it or once like one or two people the right people see it and see like wow this could be really successful and something new and exciting for people like that's all we need you know but it's like we we got to get our foot in the door and we just we got to start somewhere yeah so yeah, I mean, there was so much that went on between, because um, I feel like they did two dance acts, they did a sword swallowing act, they did the roller skating act, mm -hmm. they had comedy in between, and you could do that on a smaller scale. I mean, on that level of what they're pulling off in a production, like, that was a lot. Like, it was a long show, but I mean, mm -hmm. you could pull off an hour and put together a couple of different things and like really do something cool at local theaters around here and then all it would be is you guys kind of working the kinks out and then it's like once you would work the kinks out then you take all right well does this make sense into doing this into brick and mortar very similar to what i was explaining about us doing the food but i i mean i could team up with you guys and do food for an event like that pull in alcohol exactly and then yeah now you have you know you pull in a like a distillery and then you have somebody doing like specific drinks made for the event and then you have food there and now you have unique food unique drinks and then you have an experience going on i think you guys should really start like putting your nose to the ground and like go and i feel like basically this, i feel like it's needed we basically have everything together too because my sister even though she's creative but she she also has a very good like business mind as far as like like because i'll just go off and be like we could do this and, that. and then she's like Lindsay, <laughs> let's take a little bit of a step back because this 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 and this you know that's still laws and th you know or the the reality of the situation and so she'll take me back but she'll also will then figure out a way to still have that like ooh ah you know yeah vibe but you like, need that yeah, so everything's together. Everything's ready to go. It's just now we're going to be looking for artists. So that's kind of also what I want to throw out there. Like anywhere in the tri-state area like that is willing to travel because I'm I'm trying to do book things and do things in Pennsylvania, Jersey, I mean maybe New York. I don't know why I have such a like whatever towards New York, but whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah, so... In, all in between all that whole like from where we are in Pennsylvania to like Asbury and everywhere in between you know like I want to get into all of that and pick apart like towns and venues and there's like distilleries all up in uh by Asbury that are that have these beautiful places but they have nothing to do on like a Friday night yeah even so, wineries Exactly. And they so, got all that open space there. So we just need artists. We need artists that um, kind of have an open schedule that have variety acts from like acrobatics to like atmosphere to just like all all types of, of um, you know, entertainment and uh, skill sets. So that's what we that's really the only thing we need to do is put in put together a team of artists and performers and to have them available for these things. Yeah, you'd almost have to do auditions at this point. Mm -hmm, for sure. It's cool though seeing um, what you talked about with like the costume design and then seeing like how they put on the production and it's very similar to like 
you know, if I relate it to what I'm going through is like, I worked in a restaurant so long, I know how to run a restaurant. So I'm going to open a restaurant. So it's very similar where you've been in this field for so long, you now know how to do it. So why wouldn't you be the people who are making the money running the event? Because now you're going to be able to have your creative freedom and be able to handle the women and the people in there in a professional manner that you wish you would have been treated like better or you can just treat people correctly. Exactly. And I've been behind the scenes i've been on the scenes so i know the ins and the outs and and so i really am at a point where like i like what i said before i'm gonna use all that information over the years even from like because i've been on stage since i was little yeah everything like all of that even when i was performing in vegas i would always go up to like the light crew or the dj and see what they do and then also in between like my breaks i would go out to the audience and look at the stage and see what worked and see what see what how do you picture it going like what acts would you want so if like you could present this or you pull off the first one what would be the mix of things that you would want for entertainment um definitely you know so like a like a four solid girl crew that just like does insane beautiful awesome choreography um you know then you have the atmosphere girls where like they would be at the entrance and like either like a cage or a swing and then they would come down from like uh chandelier uh little uh apparatuses pour champagne for the first hour but like upside down and then you know in between you definitely have to have some type of comedic something yeah and i'm thinking like an awesome just like drag queen who just like kicks ass is beautiful and is funny you know and and then just have like different acts whether it be you know chains someone that like does the chain act and then you have like uh, just either the silks or the lira. Then you have like a little bit of a seductive act where like you bring someone up on stage, like a, a guy up on stage and she does a whole like thing. So just like a, I just like that bringing it back to just the beautiful entertainment of a woman doing different types of things. I do want men in there a little bit because you got to throw men in there somewhere. Yeah. But um. And I didn't want to be like canceled because I didn't have a man in the show. No, but like when I went to <laughs> the absence show and it's the only one I keep referencing because it's the only one I've been to, but that was mixed. And then there was a break and then uh, I believe like two gentlemen came out and were doing like choreography. And then it like kind of, you could see, like I was just like, what? And then all the girls were like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, so I you get need, it. <laughs> you, you need it. You yeah. need a little bit of, of a mixed vibe. Um, but And there's so many, I want to find like a specialty act, whether it be like even the fire breathing, which you have to be careful with that, but (laughs) and where you are. Um, There's snake dancers. There's all these things like where you can still keep that burlesque vibe, but like make it more of like, like actual choreographed entertainment and badass, but just mix it up. And then, like, on on the hour or whatever, you have the breaks and the girls come down from the chandeliers and they give you some some more champagne and they go back up. So, and I want, like, an old school, like, singer who, like, comes down off of this, like, you know, little pod, which would be my sister in, like, a gown with the rockabilly mic and just starts singing old school and then has dancers, you know, something like that. But I mean, the list goes on. I have so many ideas out on, on like paper and in my proposal. But so, just a variety of beauty and entertainment and good music. Yeah, because that's it's huge. I yeah. didn't realize um, how much that played a part until going to all the different casinos. And my buddy's like, like, um, you know, he went to school for lighting and he does this show would not exist without him. He's the one who put all this lighting in. He's the one who helps me with this. He's the one who I've been following around like a puppy learning. You know how you're talking about, oh, I used to go up to the DJ. Like they used to take me on sets and they'd film music videos and I would just, hey, what's this? Hey, what's that? Mm-hmm. What's this do? Can you go? Get, uh, yeah, I'll go get coffee. Like then I'd rush back from coffee. Okay, so what's going on now? What's the timing on this? How does all this work? And I, I would watch them do stuff and then it's like, you know, um, you know, I was talking to him and he's just like, listen to 
the the music and I was like yeah and he's like it's loud enough that we don't hear other people but we can have a conversation mm. and he's just like this entire city is designed correctly he's mm. like it's for entertainment it's for atmosphere it's there there's music I was trying to shazam stuff it's not even coming up because it's all custom <laughs> DJ you know what I mean like so it's like you know you're in the elevator and as you get lower the music gets louder and then when you walk out it's like you're, you're in it and then he's, he's like isn't that cool and I was like what and he's like that's what they do like they don't have music in the elevator because you're the lower you go to the ground the louder it gets and then as soon as you get closer to the door and it opens it's Las Vegas and it's like all of that is like engineered and like you come back to where a place where there isn't any of that existing and you're like oh but if you're a person like, you're like ourselves <laughs> where you're like I want to create this here and like I took so much out of that trip where I'm like I'm no longer nervous about doing everything I told you and like three months ago I was like I don't know if I could do this but I'm around a bunch of people in the area that aren't they're not doing stuff like that so then when you're trying to do something super original I mean, it's even the same way with food where you're like, oh, I hope people will like this. Then you go somewhere where you see so many people enjoying such out of the box ideas and so much production put into it. And like when you're saying coming down from the ceiling, somebody who hasn't been to Las Vegas thinks that crazy. And that's all that it was in that show was people coming up and down. And I looked up and I'm like, oh, it's just rigs and it's not yeah. rocket science. You just have to find the correct acts and dancers because... I wouldn't have anything that that wasn't like top line with that. <laughs> no, like, no, you have somebody you know, my hurt. my <laughs> there's a well, fire <laughs> and like even down to like the artists. Like I because the whole point of this bringing bringing this to people is I want them to be. Um, just like mesmerized yeah i want them to be mesmerized by not only physically what's happening but overall like everything from like the vibe of the music to the artists and to the movement to the atmosphere everything has to come together to create that mesmerizing impact on people and that's the goal because there's really i want to bring mesmerizing entertainment to the valley <laughs> because I think people need to experience that and they don't because we, we live there like people live yeah like, like there's no shows at the casino <laughs> there's no shows in general <laughs> yeah I mean there's comedians that come in and there's concerts but there's no shows there's so much more out there yeah what so, a waste of a venue yeah so so then it's getting down to like where do we reach out and where do we like say That's the hard stuff hey, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because some people are just going to turn away because it's out of the normal. It's not yeah. normal. And people don't like but then you'll find the ones that are like taking that will take a risk to and like open up some a new anything but it's very hard to find those. Yeah. So that's that's kind of the issue I guess with putting this on, but I think that there, there, without a doubt, there are going to be people that are open to this idea and um, executing it and seeing where it goes. Um, it's inspiring to hear all this and to see how much drive and passion and belief and creativity you have in it. And um, uh, what are you doing? Because now that you're like trying to get all this together, and I. I do want to get into the costume stuff and you have that on Etsy and like what's kind of like what you're doing with the costume side of it because as much as you're putting that all together and you will be using your talent to make costumes for the show, mm -hmm. you do have like a line and things that you're making for um, like dance and similar to what we're talking about. Yeah, so uh, the Etsy store, it's simply simple designs. Um, so it's, I create kind of, I started with, with creating costumes for like production companies. There's a pr production company in Maryland that I like sometimes get, give costume to for the girls to wear for events and stuff. And then I got into kind of accessories, headpieces, and I made these like giant wings that are mechanical and like for a project that I did. And um, so I'm kind of just like, it's a little bit of everything. 
Um, there's body suits. There's like not jewelry, but like just things that you can throw on with an outfit if you're going to. I mean, it's not like everyday stuff, but like if you for like photo shoots or like if you are into festivals and going to stuff like that, it's all kind of just like out of the like box, all creative different walks of life uh type of things you know so no i started um i mean i follow your social media and uh i've been watching for a while and then when you started kind of pushing into that it was kind of like the first time i started seeing like your angles and like what you wanted to do now that you're back in the area and like i think it's awesome that you're trying to get all this together and like your story is so inspiring and crazy and you know how you pushed yourself (laughs) um through everything you've been and then stayed out in Vegas and then come to come back to the area and then want to give a piece of Las Vegas to anywhere on the East Coast uh, would be so awesome to see happen. Um, What do you have coming down the pipe in like the next couple of years that you'd like to really see like happen? Um, You know, just just starting that avenue of bringing production entertainment to any any venue or person or company that's willing to have us, you know? So putting that all together, crossing the T's, dotting the I's with that and getting exposure. Um, That's really the main goal for that. And then obviously creating costumes is always going to be going. Um, And, you know, in between I teach dance, I'm still at a studio in Jersey, but I'm independently branching off and teaching dance for like, weddings and social dancing because obviously people you know need a little bit of that before like their big day so I'm doing that in the meantime as well but the main goal is just getting this together getting it out there and 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 making that transition into oh we did it at one venue now we're going to do it at multiple venues and maybe we'll actually have a venue you know but um that's kind of the goal of like getting everything together getting it you know shipped up shaped out or shape whatever <laughs> but um yeah so so that's that's kind of the goal um i'm really really glad to have sat down and had this conversation um I really pay attention to any more the conversations that I have with people when they come on here. I we normally would have never had an over an hour to talk like oh, this shit. and it goes fast. <laughs> but like um you know I, I really started paying attention to the fact of like when I was younger like I used to think I was weird or like you know there was a point where I was like wild and like I didn't know how to control my creativity and like I would kind of like not think like I I felt alone a lot of times and like when you live in an area where there's not a lot of shit going on it's very important to surround yourselves with other creative people and you know this show and other shows and I bring people on here and I have this time and like I start like I'm motivated to like when you're talking about all this I'm like oh I definitely want to get something together I'm like we could definitely pull off a smaller event and then I'm like we could get a photographer yeah, and then at least they steps, would, I'm like we'll... then they would have at least like a photo so then they could use that to try and get into a bigger event but like my wheels are turning but that's why I enjoy like I talked to somebody who I booked is coming on in a couple of weeks and like we just started talking and like my whole like I just I go up so high and then you're up here and it's hard to stay up here especially when you want to live up here and mm-hmm. if you don't have people that keep you up here or other people that are trying to be up here mm-hmm. you you come down so like the more I go up the longer it takes to come down so like this is a conversation that has, has put me up like you're very motivational you um you, you obviously do not give up and everything that you say it's hard sometimes to say out loud what you want to do because people don't believe in you or they think you cra- you're crazy and I can tell you're past the point oh, I've of been giving called a crazy fuck. my whole life yeah <laughs> you're way past the point of caring whether or not what people think of your ideas but it's inspiring to see how much you believe in them and i do believe that you will put all this together um i know you got other shit to do today and i know you guys or you'll be back on and we talked about that cooking show and you guys have full access to yeah i want i want to see how that comes out uh and i don't want to spoil the idea but there is opportunities with me making a bigger studio to give people like yourself uh, an opportunity to shine. So I'm excited to work together more if you want to or to even talk doing events. Yeah. And like, I'm trying to do small
smaller stuff here and like we turned this into like a cocktail lounge and we had a tiki bar and we had cool music going and we had an act here and like I want to do more of that um yeah. so I would love to uh, butt heads on and like really collab on something like that. I want to give you the opportunity to plug your social media wherever you have your costume design or anybody who's listening if they have an act or they know somebody. Everybody always knows something and that's the beauty about this network is like I'll get somebody because like, I'll post on social media be like I need a fire act and somebody be like well I posted the one time that I needed a dog to attack me and then I started getting in <laughs> contacts with like police officers who have canines so like the network is very unusual and it's very unique and I, I like what it's turning into and I didn't ever think that I would have something like this, but it's cool to be able to help people that are connected in this manner. So it's like all your friends are going to watch this, but then I have people that know you that are going to watch it and everybody's ears and eyes are open and it's a very positive show where people help each other. And I didn't make this. It's what it turned into naturally and it's really cool. I so I want you to kind of give your social media or any way anybody can get a hold of you for dance or any way that somebody wants something from you, you can you have the floor. Yeah, so on Instagram and Facebook, as far as my costumes, it's Simply Simple Designs. Um, it's on both Instagram, Facebook, same thing. Um, and then once, you know, the production part of it comes together, it's going to be Simply Simple uh, Productions. But you can hit me up on my costume um line and pages just dm me because i am looking for artists to create this production uh traveling production company artists like it doesn't even matter if you think that what you do is weird hit me up because i'm looking for a variety of performers and and just like stuff that you just wouldn't see um and uh to you know put together a team and so i'm looking for i'm looking for it all so DM me on that, Simply Simple Designs, and, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Cool. I want to thank you again, and I love what you're doing. Uh, if you're a first-time listener, first-time watcher, it's neveragainstudio.com. That has our YouTube, Spotify, all that stuff. There is links there. If you want to watch this on video, it is YouTube. Subscribe to the video. We are trying to get up to a point where we can monetize on it, and we have plenty of shows coming down the pipe. Uh, all the apparel's coming back, so we're going to be do doing drop shipping with uh, Kyle Metz. He is our sponsor for um, the, uh, the apparel, so he's going to be handling all that. So that's coming soon or is already happening because I don't know when this is going to air, but it's neveragainstudio.com. Dot com that has anything if you have questions hit me up you want to be a guest you have no a guest you know anything hit me in my dms on instagram never again studio Slide thank you so much yeah. <laughs> what up girls <laughs> thank you <Woo. laughs> Never again radio. Get into it, brother.